The first step in this project will be to make an ordering screen, taking basic details of an order. That means how many cupcakes they want, what type they want, and any special customizations. But before we get on to the UI, I first want to think about our data model. Previously, you've seen how at state is great for storing local values, and how at state object is great for reference types stored somewhere else. We've also seen how we can have an observable object class with structs inside the class, giving us the best of both worlds. Here, though, I want to show a different option. We're going to have a single class that contains all our data that we pass from screen to screen to screen, which means all the screens in our application will share the same data, which will work really well, as you'll see. For now, this class does not require a great deal of information. The type of cakes the user wants, plus a static array of all possible options. Then how many cakes the user wants to order, what the user wants for special requests, uh, for example, um, we will show or hide extra options for them. Do they want extra frosting on their cupcakes? Do they want to have extra sprinkles on their cupcakes? Now, each of these things needs to update the UI as they are uh, changed, which means we'll mark them at published. So they publish change announcements. Then we'll make the whole class conform to observable object. So Swift UI views know to watch it. So press Command N, make a new file, select Swift file, and call this thing order.swift. Go ahead and change its foundation import to Swift UI, and then make the following class. We've got a class order, which is an observable object. I'll make my static array of all possible types. Static let types equals an array of vanilla and strawberry and chocolate and rainbow. Then we'll say there's at published var type, the one the user wants, it's vanilla by default. At published var quantity, I think three's fair. Then we'll say at published var special request enabled, has a user asked for special request to exist? We'll say it's not by default. At published var extra frosting. Uh, we'll say that is false by default, so regular amount of frosting. And then at published var add sprinkles. And we'll say false as well. So that's our basic order type. And now in content view, we can go ahead and make one of these things using the at state object property wrapper to keep it alive the entire time our view is visible. So we'll say at state object var order equals order. And that's the only place in the whole app where the order will be created. That's why it's at state object here. Everywhere else will be just sharing that same object. So we'll work the same data. They'll use at observed object. This one creates it at state object. Now we're going to build the UI for this particular screen in three sections, starting with cupcake type and quantity. This will start with a, a little picker, so users can select between vanilla chocolate, strawberry, and rainbow. Then a stepper, so they can choose uh, how many they want. We'll use a range of three through 20. All of that will be inside a form, which itself inside a navigation view, so we can set a title. There is a small speed bump here. When we made our class, I intentionally gave you an array of strings for our types. But the user is stored and storing their option as a number, type zero, type one, type two, type three, which is a fairly common thing to have. How can we match the two? We're storing a string for our types, but an int for the selected type. One solution, and it's actually surprisingly easy to use, is to look for the indices property of an array, which gives us the position of each item. And then we can then use that as an array index to read the items back out of types again. This is, and I cannot say this clearly enough, this is a really bad idea for mutable arrays. Mute arrays that can be changed over time, not constant arrays like this one here. Because the order of your array can change over time. So type zero might change to be uh, extra chocolate sprinkles rainbow in the future. 
if you can rearrange your array. In this case, we can't. Our array is constant, so the indices is perfectly safe to use. So in our content view, we're gonna say there is a navigation view with a form inside. Then our first section, this thing has a picker saying select your cake type. I'll bind the selection to be $order.type. Inside there for our options, I'll say for each order.types.indices. So we'll read out the values from the array in ascending order. And then we'll say text order.types dollar zero. So that's the index being passed into us. Each item is being passed through. So it'll be zero, one, two, and three. That's our first picker. Then we'll say below that, there is a stepper saying number of cakes. We'll do uh, order dot quantity. Value bound to dollar order dot quantity because it's read and write in the range three through 20 because surely 20 cupcakes is enough for everyone. Then we'll attach a modifier to our form saying navigation title is cupcake corner. That's our first section. Nothing too complex there, I think, apart from the new indices thing, but we're learning as we go. The second section of our form will hold three toggle switches, one bound to special request enabled, one bound to extra frosting, and one bound to add sprinkles. And what we're going to do is make extra frosting and add sprinkles considered special requests. And so they'll only be visible when the special requests toggle is enabled. So we'll wrap them in a condition. We'll say uh, inside our form as a second section, uh, toggle here will be any special requests. And that we bound to is on dollar order dot special request enabled dot animation. And then if the order has special requests enabled, we'll add our two extra toggles. Toggle for, uh, come on, add extra frosting with is on bound to, oops, not dollar is on, it's regular is on, bound to order extra frosting. And then below that, we'll say toggle add extra sprinkles. Is on is dollar order dot add sprinkles. Go ahead and run the app now. Hopefully that will give us a, a starting position for our app. Let's find out. Uh, so we can select cake type. I'll change vanilla to be uh, chocolate or, you know, while we're here, rainbow. Uh, we can go ahead and select more cakes, up to 20 rainbow cakes. And when I toggle the toggle switch, you'll see these new ones slide in neatly. I can enable each of those. That happens because we have the animation modifier for special request enabled. So they'll slide in and slide out easily and smoothly. However, there is a bug. I've gone here and I've enabled special requests, I've enabled extra frosting, I've enabled extra sprinkles, 20 rainbow uh, cakes of death, quite frankly. Uh, speak to dentist, folks. Um, but if I then say, actually, no, I've, I've changed my mind, my uh, blood sugar cannot handle extra frosting and extra sprinkles with rainbow cakes, and turn off special requests, actually, it stayed on those two options. As you can see, if I re-enable it, they are still on. Oh, hello. It's still on. So the special requ requests are still enabled despite me saying no. It's remembered extra frosting, rem remembered extra sprinkles, which isn't great. This kind of problem isn't too hard to work around uh, if your app, your database, and your website, everything, your server, if they're all configured to understand uh, actually, if special request is disabled, ignore whatever extra frosting is, ignore extra sprinkles, ignore everything if special request is disabled. Um, you can do that, right? But a better idea, you know, a safer idea, is to make sure at the app level that both extra frosting and extra sprinkles are disabled when special requests are disabled. Isn't that right? You love sprinkles, don't you? You do. Come on. Um, we can make that happen in our code, it isn't so hard. We can just add a did set property observer to special request enabled in our order class down here. So we'll say, don't drop the treats. Are you drooling on my chair? Lovely, lovely. 
thought you were a nice dog. Um, what am I going to say in here? Um, special request enabled is false by default, but inside there is a did set that will run when the value is changing. And if special request enabled is now false, then extra frosting is always false and add sprinkle is always false. And now uh, we should be guaranteed a much safer environment. So I can go ahead and add special requests. Yes, please. I want frosting. I want sprinkle. Give me the works. But I disable special requests and re-enable it. They are now disabled. So we're correctly forcing it off. Yes, our server can do it. Yes, our database can do it as well. But there's no harm being extra sure here in the app as well. That's the second section of our form. You want another treat? You're going to come in here and drop bits of treat on my floor and drool in my chair and get a third treat. How can I say no to those eyes? I, you can't. This dog is staring up at me with the most completely innocent eyes imaginable and doesn't need an extra treat apparently. There you go. That's it though. That's it no more, honestly. Um, that second section done. Our, our third section, I think, is the easiest because it's just a navigation link to the next screen, um, which we haven't made yet. We have no second screen, so we'll make it a real quick version just so we can point to something. Um, press Command then, make a new Swift UI view. Call this thing an address view or an address view, if you prefer that particular pronunciation. And then press Create. Uh, Hello world is fine, but we're not going to fill it in just yet. But we are going to say you must pass in an observed object. <laughs> you had three treats. Order and order. You must give me the order we're currently working with in order to use this view. And so down the previews, make sure you pass in an example order to keep Swift happy. Um, so you might say the order is a new empty order like that. Um, we're going to make that screen fully shortly, okay? But for now, it means we can return back to content view and add the final section for our form. This is just a navigation link pointing to that new address view, passing in the current order object. So we'll say there's a section here with a navigation link inside. Inside there, you're not getting another treat. You've had three treats, no. Address view with order order and a label of uh, text delivery details like that. What? You're not getting go away. Come on, clear off. <laughs> Delivery details. Oh, both dogs now. You brought your sister along. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. She hasn't had one yet. Come on. I'll go ahead and say, yes, um, vanilla's fine. I want three of them, good girl. Three of them, no special requests. Delivery details and bang, there we go. Hello, world. That completes our first screen. We can select our type really smoothly with indices. We have our... Uh, number of cakes here with a lovely animation with a dis observer, removing options again, plus the navigation link, all working just fine.